Hi, it's Monday, April 6th, and it's planning day, finally. Well, I haven't hauled all weekend whether I wanted to plant or not. The next, at the end of this week, it's supposed to be freezing temperatures, snow, and freezing rain. I was like, do I want to plant them? Don't I want to plant them? Uh, people say when they use the fleece agribon, they can take temperatures down in the upper 20s. And I thought, well, let's give it a try. It's only plants. We can always put some more in. It would put me behind a little bit, but this is the only way to really test out this theory of Charles Dowling of using the fleece on compost, planting them early, getting them hardened off without putting them outside, just putting them under the fleece. So it's a great time to check this out. So I'm going to be planting today some peas, some lettuce sets, some onions, and probably some spinach. Maybe I'll come back and do beets later. We'll see. See how it goes. See how well the root system is. They're a little bit early. I planted these to be planted out on April 17th. So I'm 11 days early, but the sets are looking good. Let's just hope the root systems are. But before I start, I want to thank all those people that are out there that are working essential jobs. I really appreciate what you're doing and the sacrifices you have. I myself work an essential job, but I'm lucky enough where I work from 9 p.m. to 1 in the morning. I don't really come in contact with that many people, and I appreciate that. But over the weekend, I had tons of orders from the Home Micro Green store. And if you're one of those customers, I really appreciate your order. So I packaged up a lot of um, trays, soil, and seed and took them to the post office and UPS today. And it's been great. UPS has a bin right outside where I just put the uh, pre-packaged or the pre-priced, pre-paid postage right in there. I don't have to come and contact anyone. And same with the post office. They have a counter that's just set aside for the prepaid. You just set your boxes on there, you walk out, and you're all done. I really appreciate that. And all the people that worked at the Walmarts, the grocery stores, the Home Depots, the Lowe's. I'm trying not to go there. I could really use some fabric right here on this row. I want to put some fabric down to keep the weeds down between my first bed and the fence bed, but it's not really essential. When I do have to go to Home Depot to get something, then I'll get the fabric. Until then, I'm just going to stay the hell away. So let's get started. The first off, we're going to be planting some peas. So let's get those into the ground. All right, let's get some of these peas in the ground. You can see I have my pea sets here along with some other things that aren't quite ready, but I'm gonna grab the peas out of here. These are the bootstrap trays. Look how, I mean, I can't even twist these things. They're so great. These are the 72 cell inserts. See how they hold themselves up. I know they're a lot of money, but they're worth it because they're gonna last years, 10 years, 15 years, who knows how long. If I take care of these things, they're gonna last forever. The only downfall I see is that they do have just one little hole in the bottom. So you need something to poke the set out because you can't squeeze you can't squeeze the tray to push the set out. And you can see the kale's, or the kale's not quite loving it yet, but we'll get them back in the car. So what I've used, or what I brought somewhere here, is just a spade bit. I'll just use this end to poke them up through. So the peas, I'm gonna plant about right here. And the deal is that I'll hook up some rope to this fence, keep them corralled to the fence so that they'll grow up along the fence and I'll plant something out in front whether it's flowers or onions. I'll probably put some onions in here. So let's get started. Um, I got, oh, these are multi-sowed. These are two to three seeds per cell, and I'm gonna plant them 10 inches apart. So let's get started. I'll put the first one in, maybe do another one. So basically, I just take the trowel and push it forward. And you can see this is an area where I don't have any cardboard down, so and the mulch is not five inches thick, so we'll see how well it goes. And then take your sets out of your main tray, and then use this thing to poke up the cell. Let's see how well these are. I don't know how well rooted these are. Oh yeah, they're really they're looking good. So you can see here's a set. Can't see this one, you'll see the next one. And Charles always says you can plant them deeper than you think. So I'm going to put them in pretty far. Them down in the ground, stand them up. Now he doesn't push the soil in, but I'm going to push a little bit of soil in around them just to hold them up. So I need these 10 inches apart. I know my trowel is 12 inches. It has a little gauge on the side. So I put the handle here. There's two inches. So now I know that this is about 10 inches apart. So I'll put the next one in. Let's dig a little hole. And here's the problem with the drill bit. It's the same damn color as the soil, and I don't know where it is. Well, ain't that something. Ah, found it. I was standing on it. So again, we're going to take a set out of here. See the root development? 
push that set up through the holes, pull it out, pull this forward, which isn't going there pretty good, pretty deep. Push a little mulch around just to hold them up. Move on down. And I'll do one more. Make sure it's 10 inches. Push the plug up. Put it in the hole. Put a little bit of soil around it. Go 10 inches. Start the next one. See, the soil is pretty nice. It's nice and pretty loose, so I'm pretty happy with that. This one's only a single. It's only one of the seeds germinated. Again, this is the first time this has ever been planted into, as far as I know, so it's a little firm. Do one more and then we'll cut to the end. Definitely gonna put some tape around this drill bit so that I can see it better. And there we are, I'll just continue the row. Now that they're all planted, it's time to water them in. Water is gonna be a problem here. It's, like I said, this is remote. It's not really near anything and they don't have the water turned on yet to the community garden. So I got pails and buckets set up for rainwater collection, but I know I'm eventually gonna to have to go back home and get pails of water and bring them, bring them here. Hopefully they get the water turned on soon, but I can't imagine them doing it anytime within a month or so. So we're gonna to have to count on some rainfall. Problem is this agarbon or this fleece that I'm gonna put over has a tendency to repel water at first, so I'm gonna to have to be careful. The next thing I have to do is cover those with the agarbon 30 or the fleece. Of course, this is one other problem with having a community garden away from where you live is I have forgot the fleece so I'll have to go back and get that to cover those. But that's okay, because I'm probably gonna need water anyways. So you're gonna see the fleece operation here in a minute when I do the lettuce and the onions and the spinach. So let's get on to those next. So the next area is right here. It's the area that I actually covered with the fleece for the seeds of the uh, lettuce seeds I planted. So let's take that off so we can get going. Now this fleece is actually seven feet by 50 feet long and the reason I didn't cut it because my beds are 24 is that I want to use it single row when it's nice and warm out or warmer out and I want to double it up during the frosty days so I can just loop it back on itself that's the plan anyways we'll see how that works you can see it's drying up on the top I don't see any lettuce growing I don't know how that seeds gonna do but let's get started with the next plants. I think I'm going to do some lettuce in here. Before you plant, you want to have some plans on how you're going to do things. So I've done scale drawings of how I want to do my plantings depending on the spacing. So this is my lettuce at nine inches. So I'm going to do a row six inches from the edges, do a row nine inches apart, and then a row nine inches up, but interspace them between. Let's see, these are two inches. That's two, four, six, eight, yep, nine inches. So I'm going to do rows nine, alternate them in between. I also I've done it for 18 inch and my 12 inch spacings. So always have some plans just to get going, get it ready. So I don't know if you can see on there, but I've made marks. So I have rows nine inches apart and then I alternate the plants six inches on the edge, nine inches up and then in inner space between them. So squares in between them. So I'm gonna plan, I know you can't see the ones closer. I'll start on the row on the outside and we'll put that in and then I'll show you the, the completed. So the first one I'm going to plant is green leaf. It's called Ezzarella. Let's get that planted. The compost is pretty hard. Like I said, this is a short area for me in between these beds. I got long legs and I can barely kneel in between these. That's why I had a little bit wider rows than most people to begin with. And I'll just try to reach across this bed. 
See that compost packed in there pretty hard. Probably harder than I want it, but there's not much I could do about it. Animal life, the worm life and other soil life will square it up, get it ready for me. Plants like a little bit of firm structure to grow into anyways. They like to they like to uh, push down into the, the roots down in. See, I'm planting them pretty deep. I don't know if you can see that upper row or not, so I'll plant this back row. So this is an alternating row, so it's in between here. These could probably have been rooted a little bit better, but I'm gonna plant them anyways. And heck, if a leaf falls off, you can eat it. So there's the green leaf in, now let's move on to the red leaf. So the red leaf's a little, it's called burgundy, I believe. Again, it was a pelletized seed. You can see it's a little bit smaller than what the green leaf is, but we'll get it in the ground anyways and see how well it does. I'll show you the results when we get it done. So there's the lettuce sown. You can't really see the red leaf, but it's basically planted from here to here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six rows of red leaf. I think what I'm gonna do is, this is seeded lettuce, just with lettuce seeds. Ah, some of it is growing. But what I think I'm going to do is still put in some green onions right in the midst of it. Save the space, the green onions will grow up, and the lettuce I get, the lettuce I get. The green onions are planted seven or eight to a pack. The idea is that they'll grow in a bunch. They like to be together, grow sort of as a community, and then you just pull out the larger ones and let the other smaller ones continue to grow in the, in the little area. So I'm going to put some green onions in here. I probably won't put them all, but I'll put some. And uh, all the extra lettuce I planted with the peas. I had some extra lettuce sets, no sense of wasting them. I put them right in front of the peas. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, they don't. So let me get these onions in. I want to see how well these onion sets do in with the baby leaf lettuce. So I put five in there. I'll plant the rest in other rows, but just wanted to check it out and see if they will grow up over the lettuce. See how well they grow together. It'd be a good space saver if that does work. So I think next I'm going to plant. Uh, the green onions and then the spinach. All right, we're going to start with spinach on this end and move our way down. Oh, I also planted three bro broccoli rob down here. Never grew it before. Figured I'd give it a try. I grew a few and we'll put them in, see how well they do. So let's get going with the spinach. The spinach is planted. By the way, the spinach is planted two to three seeds per cell. Again, I'm going to grow this pretty tight. And we'll see how well it does. This could probably grow a little bit longer, but I think it'll be all right. I know it's early, but I wanted to try it, see how early I can get this stuff in. It's all experiment, so. Why not go all in, try everything? A lot of times people don't put gardens in in here in this area until Memorial Day with sets. So earlier the better. It's all a gamble. So we'll get these planted and then I'll show you the results. So we got this bed planted. We're doing spinach, spinach right to here. Then I got some green onions, broccoli rob, a couple green onions for spacers. Then I have red leaf lettuce, green leaf lettuce, green onions mixed in with the seeded uh, baby salad mix. And then up on top, I've got peas and the extra green onions, red lettuce, and green leaf. Now I gotta go back, get some water, get the other agribon, and get these things covered up. Well, the bed's all planted. I went and got some water and the other agribon, fleece, if you will. Water them in. I really wish I could do double the watering, but I'll come back tomorrow. What have I learned from all this? 
So far anyways, compost. Have it on site six months before you need it. So in the fall, bring your compost in for the spring. And then in the spring, bring your compost in for the fall. Second, have a way to get some water to your site if you can. Frost-free hydrant, whatever you can. I can't hear, obviously it's not my property. But if you have some property, figure out your watering, whether you have haul hoses down to use it, um, or wagons with pails, but whatever, try to get the water. Obviously a frost-free uh, hydrant would work the best. And second, don't be scared to put the stuff in. We'll just see how well this does. You can see they're wilting a little bit. I mean, it's to be surprised. They've been in a 70 degree house, and now they're out here in a 50 degree bed with some wind. So I'll get the Agrabon on, cover them up, all right, as you see, the fleece is on. It's on pretty tight. There's still some slack in there. You don't want it too loose so that the wind brings it up and down and whacks the crap out of your plants. Just like microgreens, those plants, if they do grow, will lift that fleece up. It won't be a problem for the time that it's on. Again, I have double when there's frost. I can take that, loop it around, put an air space between them, protect them a little bit more. The idea of the fleece is to keep the cold wind off the plants. Even though it reflects some sunlight, and since it'll still take solar energy in and heat up the soil and heat up the plants. I don't expect the plants to grow much, but hopefully they'll start setting root so that when I can lift the fleece off, they'll start growing like wildfire. One more thing I've learned, always eat breakfast before you go in the garden. You lose so much track of time. It's like middle of the afternoon now and I haven't eaten yet, but I'm glad I got this done. I got my first sets in the ground. They're all covered to water. Again, water's a problem, but I just had to bring it down every day and check on them. And um, I'm really, really pleased that I've got some in the ground. It's, let's see, today's a six, so they're in 11 days earlier than I expected. So I'm glad you stayed with me. I'm glad to get these in the ground, and I hope you're all doing well. And we'll see you in the next video.